Hi there and welcome back. So let's continue with the endocrine system and in this one we will take a look at the diabetes insipidus. Hypothalamus makes and pituitary tumor stores antidiuretic hormone ADH and when there is a problem with the ADH or the hormone, one type of hormone that leads to the diabetes insipidus. So, uh, vasopressin is another name for the ADH. It controls the amount of water the kidneys release in the urine. So, patient with diabetes insipidus have higher amount of urine that is diluted because of the inability to control the amount of water in the urine. Okay? And uh, most cases occur because there isn't enough ADH, so the hypothalamus doesn't produce enough and hence the pituitary tumor doesn't store enough. Or the kidneys are not responding properly to the a hormone being released by the pituitary and as a result what happens so let's say for example if a person without diabetes insipidus were in the desert with no access to water he or she would produce more ADH hormone and hold water from the urine a person with diabetes insipidus would continue to urinate the water and would become dehydrated. Okay. And of course, this is diabetes insipidus. So there could be the blood sugar, the typical diabetes then when we talk about or the urinary tract infections and many other causes that may lead to um, increase in the urine. But that is different than the diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus as the focus of anti-diuretic hormone produced by the hypothalamus stored by the pituitary uh, gland and there are some uh, variations that we will get into here so of course you get more thirsty and all these uh, symptoms are there and if the condition can get as worse as um, you end up urinating as much as about 19 liters as opposed to a 1 or 2 liters that a healthy person would do. And of course these are the uh, symptoms that one would see. So when the problem happens because of central uh, hypothalamus or pituitary gland so then it is labeled as central diabetes insipidus because, it, because of the damage to those. It could be due to the tumor, it could be due to the production, storage and release of ADH. So these three things matter. It could be genetic, it could be due to tumor. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus occurs when there is a defect in the structure of in the kidneys that makes your kidneys unable to properly respond to the ADH that we just talked before and of course there are some medications that can also cause such uh, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus a uh, gestational diabetes insipidus is rare but it may happen and uh, Basically, the placenta destroys the ADH in the mother. That's why it happens. Excessive thirst is the fancy name uh, given in the medical literature as primary polydipsia. And what is happening here is the thirst regulating mechanism is not working properly. It is connected to uh, hypothalamus and hence uh, one could have uh, excessive thirst. Now there may be also linked to any mental illness like schizophrenia and 
of course, if that is the case, treat that mental condition that may probably relieve this excessive thirst symptom. The courses are basically depending upon what type of uh, diabetes insipidus that we are dealing with. But generally speaking, it is unknown or autoimmune related. Uh, the risk factors are it may change permanently the kidney's ability to concentrate urine. Um, it affects males, though women can pass the gene on to their children. Complications are obviously dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, muscle cramps, confusion, all sorts of things. So how do doctors diagnose the diabetes insipidus? They can do if needed, depending upon the signs and symptoms, the water deprivation test. So to see how much urine you can produce when you are not drinking anything at all. Or MRI or genetic screening or blood urine test are done to connect all the dots. The treatment depends upon the type of diabetes insipidus, whether it's central. Uh, if mild, doctor may recommend just water intake. Uh, if condition is caused by, say for example, tumor, then treating the tumor may be the first course of action to take and then it will automatically, hopefully, get rid of the other secondary side effects. And of course, the medications as and when appropriate is decided by your doctor. And the nephrogenic diabetes, uh, low salt intake, uh, drink enough water to avoid dehydration, medication, as your doctor may prescribe. Uh, for the gestational diabetes insipidus medication, um, for excessive thirst, there is no specific treatment as such. But if it is caused due to any mental illness like schizophrenia or so, then of course, uh, treating that would probably um, avoid or minimize the other symptoms like excessive thirst. Let's move on. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.